Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And today's topic is Ascension to Fifth Dimension. As always, what we're going to do is we're going to do a meditation uh, to get centered, to get still, and to get connected and uh, become available by disconnecting our attention from the world surrounding us, the world out there, as well as our inner thoughts and emotions. So... Our inner thoughts and emotions are also objects. They're foreign objects. They're traveling through us. They don't represent who we are. So in order to get free, we have to learn to disassociate with all objects, whatever they are. Anything that comes and goes and is not permanently here we have to learn to disassociate from it and be indifferent to it. Indifferent to the world surrounding us, indifferent in our inner world too, with the thoughts and emotions. You have to become dispassionate with both sides in order to become free. So this meditation is, based, is directed in bringing our attention inwards to the only thing which is real. The only thing that is always here. The only thing that never changes. There's only one thing in our existence which is always the same. And that thing is the state of I am. You can call it I am. You can call it the observer, the one who's observing everything, or the one which is watching everything, the one that is aware of everything. Something here never changes. It's always the same. It's always present. It's not affected by the emotions or thoughts or events of the world. That is within you and you want to find that. You want to bring your attention to that part of yourself in order to become free completely from the cycle of life and death and suffering. So what we're going to do is very simply without any efforts zero effort. We're simply going to turn our attention inwards towards the source of everything, the source of our thoughts, the source of our own existence, and the source of all existence. That which does not change. The watcher, the observer, so go ahead and direct your attention inwards and go all the way inside. Follow the stream of your thoughts and go all the way to where they originate. And you will discover that at this place, it's very still and it's very quiet. Go ahead, take a deep breath and relax into this place. And don't struggle. Don't force yourself to stop your mind. 
no need to do a mantra or being focused on any kind of God's images or anything. You're simply following your thoughts to its origin. And you look for yourself, the watcher. And immediately your mind will go into silence. There's no need to put any kind of struggle in it. Simply divert your mind inwards. Keep in mind that this is an inside job. Anything you want to achieve, it comes from within yourself because you have everything that you need in this world. Everything. And all the answers to all of your questions can only be found within yourself. You carry all the gems and the treasures of the world. You are the one who you're looking for. All you have to do is be quiet, be available, be still. All you need to do, be quiet, be still, keep your attention on yourself, the one who is hearing me right now, the one which is here. And you will discover for yourself that you are complete, you are whole, and you're needless. And you are beautiful. And you are full of love. In fact, you are the very source of love. Love comes from you. It always comes from here. That's the only place you can find it. Take another deep breath and relax into this state that you're at. Enjoy spending time with yourself the holy self.
a deep breath and just relax in where you're at and don't fight your thoughts don't force yourself to be silent simply take your attention towards the origin of your thoughts what's before your thinking and your mind will go into silence without even trying it is a waste of time to try to quiet your mind by your own mind When you dive within yourself to the heart of awareness, you discover that everything is quiet and very still. And nothing is going on. All is well. Everything is perfect. There's nothing to worry about. Only when you come back to the world of mind, problems begin to arise. Slowly, slowly come back. Now you're bringing your attention from the inner world 
to the other world. So you're coming back to the senses, shifting your attention back to the senses. Take a deep breath. So, ascension to fifth dimension. I, it's been, many people contact me, they ask me questions or they want to reach fifth dimensional consciousness. They have heard about this, of they've read about it, they've studied about it. There's an attraction to it and the belief system in general for general public is that reaching a higher level of consciousness, fifth dimension or beyond or awakening, or it ha it's associated with a utopian type of life. So, and it's also in pseudo spirituality uh, that today is being practiced and many, many people, I would say a large number of spiritual seekers are very attracted to it, is there is this theme that the humanity, the planet Earth, humans in this shift of consciousness, they would be transported to a utopian type of life and world. While this is possible, however, that is not the answer. The answer is not shifting into a utopian style of life because that's still within the world of duality. It's still an I thought there's still somebody there wishing to create a world to their Im image, to their liking, that we're living in a, in a world that everything is according to the way we want it. And the way we want it is conditioned because your mind is conditioned, you're brainwashed, you're conditioned, from childhood to have a certain way of being and liking and not liking and your belief system of what life should be like. And then you enter in the spiritual world. So you are becoming more conscious and aware and awakening. Then you are getting brainwashed and conditioned based on a series of spiritual conditioning. So you begin to develop and replace your old bias, your old prejudice by a new bias, a new prejudice. So, and it's very, very clear. You can see in spiritual world, just like the mainstream world, that people form into groups. Cults are being formed. Um, let's say if you were with Osho, if you were with some different gurus, and let's say today you're after um, Anthony Robin, Robbins, you're after different kind of teachers. And what happens Let's say, you know, you're a Prem Baba devotee, you're a Nityananda devotee, you're a Yogananda devotee, you're, you're into the oneness uh, university, whatever, uh, you're into shamanism, you're following some Peruvian shamans, you're following some Hawaiian uh, shamans, whatever is the story, you're a spiritual teacher here in Los Angeles, wherever it is. 
so you can always cross exam yourself that and to see and also look at the group and see where the group's at and what happens is a prejudice is being developed that your guru your teacher your style of spirituality is superior to others other ways so whether you're a tibetan monk whether you are into judaism whether you're in christianity you're in sufism islam uh, those are the religions and then you can look into the spiritual world and see check check cross exam with yourself see that you feel your teacher and your belief system is superior to others and you can see it with people who become a vegan or vegetarian then there's this thing against people who eat meat um, or they're not vegan or they're not into yoga or whatever it is groups and type of mentality is being formed around that that this style of practice is more superior to other styles of practice so then you start to form and get conditioned to it a conditioning a bias a prejudice is being developed and right then and there you're in a trap you're back into the cycle of the matrix because what happens is that there is an i thought me i am separated from the whole and this is what i believe life or god existence should be according to my liking and my group and my guru my teacher he should be as or she should be a saint so what we do is we put them up and then when they don't do things we like them to do according to our liking we bring them down and we crucify them like how christ apparently got crucified so we take our teachers up there and then we crucify them later on because <clears throat> we like to believe that a spiritual teacher should be upholding certain moral moral and spiritual values and if they don't then then they're not spiritual <clears throat> now whatever is the group's moral values are that's a different story it could be about okay you can have sex you shouldn't eat meat you shouldn't smoke a cigarette you shouldn't be drinking alcohol blah 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 and if you do those things then you're not spiritual you're not awake and i'm going to get rid of you and go to somebody else i'm disappointed with you so this back to i don't want to get sidetracked this is another subject that i can talk to you about if hilda evanstadt she keeps a record of what i talk about and you can remind me hilda that i come to this subject because this is a very good subject <clears throat> so but back to oneness and back to fifth dimension what's fifth dimension where is fifth dimension and as i told you if you have an idea that humanity is going to evolve to this place and we're going to move into a utopian type of lifestyle <clears throat> and that's how you find liberation then i have to say you're in in deep trouble and you are up there for a big disappointment because that's not how it's being done i'm not saying it's not possible i'm not saying we can't go to a utopian type of a lifestyle but that is not freedom okay you're not free means that in the utter world the world outside of yourself you got it to be the way you want it to be and you think you're happy and you want things to be exactly the way you believe that's how things should be 
And that's different than how God does things. Because God doesn't really care that what you think and how you think life should be. God is going to do what God wants to do. Means God is going to experience up the opposites. God's going to experience the light and God is going to experience the dark. Both of them are two different faces of God. It's like having a coin. Have you ever had a nice, a nice coin? Somebody gifted you a coin. It's gold, it's silver. You, got, you like your coin and you turn it around and a coin has two sides. It's got two sides. All coins have two sides. They don't have one side. You don't find a one-sided coin. You find two-sided coins. That's it. So, and that's what God is. Got two sides. It's got the angelic side and it's got the demonic side. Both of them are same expressions of the same one, the absolute. <clears throat> Is this clicking? Are we together so far? Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to continue. Fifth dimension and fifth dimensional consciousness is not a geographical place that you're going to arrive to. I'm going to explain this one more time to you. Fifth dimensional consciousness is not a geographical place or a style of life that you're imagining it is. So that's not where you're going to evolve to. The fifth dimensional consciousness is like a pyramid. You got the bad and you have the good. You have to go this ladder all the way where the bad and the good, they meet each other on the top of the pyramid and then you go one step above to the eye of the pyramid, the all-seeing eye, which is the one. Means both good and bad has merged into each other. And you have evolved beyond good and bad into the oneness. Oneness means good and bad together. It doesn't just mean good. So you need to drop your idea of good and bad. Because God doesn't really give a shit whether you think it's good or it's bad. Doesn't care. Your opinion about good and bad is not being considered here. So you're wasting your time if you're trying to figure out good and bad, you have to go beyond that into the oneness where good and bad are both accepted as different aspects and different expressions of the absolute. Absolute, I'm not talking about the vodka. Absolute means everything. Absolute. All of it. All of it is the absolute, is the infinite, is everything. Everything here is welcome. Everything here is accepted. Nothing is excluded. You may not like it, or you may like it. So, Ascending to fifth dimension, ascending to a higher level of consciousness. But ascending to fifth dimension is also meaningless. It has no meaning. It's empty. It's just a bunch of baloney and a bunch of words. Okay? It doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't do anything for the spiritual uh, seeker. The words, it's bullshit.
ultimately freedom of suffering is what you're interested in you know so we're using different words pointing out these are pointers i'm pointing my finger go that direction my friend don't go this direction go that direction that's the direction that's going to free you so what we want is we we're going to become free from suffering that's what we want we want to reach ultimate happiness that's what's important to you and that's where you want to get now you can fancy it up by the word ascension to fifth dimension rising your consciousness to a higher dimension universal consciousness but those are fancy words for simply wanting to be free and wanting to be happy and being and not being haunted by by your mind your emotions and the events in the world you want to come to a place that you're not affected by it that's basically the bottom line that's what every spiritual seeker wants to get to so i just want to keep things very simple for you i don't want to confuse you and i want to be real about things so we're just like straightforward can communicate with each other and there's no bullshit in between fancy stuff and blah 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 just keep it simple and keep it real so how do we get to this place how do i ascend my consciousness to fifth dimensional consciousness how do i rise to this place so i'm giving you the clues now in 2 weeks 25th and 26th i'm having a workshop specifically for ascending your consciousness to fifth dimensional consciousness and we're going to I I will be getting into it in details and help you giving you the meditations the tools we're going to just get into it really deep with everything but today I'm going to cover the general idea of what needs to be done so and give you the tools as much as I can within the respected time we have so one of the practices and exercises that you want to do is to go beyond the duality and you have to change yourself you have to change your the way you look at things so because this whole awakening this whole emergence with the oneness starts with shifting your way of looking at things from one area to another area so and one of the practices you can do is that you want to start looking at everything as god looking at everybody pull their mask off of their face and look inside them what's the driving force the living spirit inside every human being what's driving them or any living being it's the living spirit that's behind it now you may say well these are evil people and they do bad things but where is their power source where do they get their battery where do they get their energy where does their computer gets charged from it gets charged from electricity so do we have bad electricity good electricity everybody uses electricity everyone in los angeles from the mayor of los angeles to ordinary people they use electricity they use a refrigerator microwave computer they charge their cell phones tv 
refrigerator, whatever you need, you use electricity to, to use your appliances. And that electricity is the same electricity. They're not sending a better, higher kind of an electricity to the mayor of the city or to the palace in Norway or in Sweden, to King's Palace, a better kind of electricity than sending it to your home. It's the same electricity that runs through everything. It's the same power source. Same thing for us. We're all being run by the living spirit. That living spirit is pure. There is no impurity in the living spirit in any human being, no matter who they are, no matter what they do. Within them is the same living spirit that is everywhere. So you want to go beyond because you want to merge your consciousness to the oneness. Then you have to go beyond the appearance what appears to be evil and something against your wishes and you don't like it, you need to go beyond that. You have to evolve above, above it. So if you're st stuck here in good and bad, and this is good, this is bad, I like this, I don't like this, these are evil, these are not, then you're in the loop. You're not out of the loop. You have to get out of the loop. So to get out of the loop, something needs to change. It means your perception has to change. It's your perception. It's how you see it. Similarly, you can see like you are with your sister, you're with your brother, you are with your son, daughter, dad, mom, and you're in a situation somewhere and everybody's having a good time and you're suffering. Everybody's dancing to this music, enjoying that food, but you're suffering. So what is it that everybody likes and you are suffering and you're not enjoying it? It's your taste, it's the way you look at it, it's the smell, it's your perception of a good time versus a bad time. So it's the perception that you have to change. Not geographical place, not the world. Don't waste your time trying to change the world or wishing a better world, okay? The world has been this mess always. It's always been like this. This is how it is, this world. Forget about fixing this world. It's hopeless. I wouldn't even give it a try because I waste my time and my energy and my life. Change yourself. It's an inside job. Shift your perception. That's a lot easier than trying to correct the world. The world has millions of millions of screwed up things in it. So many things are wrong in the world. Forget about changing that. Change yourself. Can you change yourself? If you can change yourself, you have the right to ask for change in the world. But if you can't even change yourself, you don't have any rights asking for change in the world because you can't even change yourself less alone asking other people and other things to change. So let's see if you can do that. Challenge yourself. So the number one thing is you have to change your perspective. So you look at every human being, you pull their mask away and you look inside them and you look, and you look for God you look for the living spirit and you see, you look at the living spirit and that living spirit is exactly your own living spirit. Because you remember, there's only one electricity 
powering all our appliances. There's no different electricities. Even if it's nuclear power, it doesn't matter. It's the same power that powers your appliances. So it's the same living spirit. So you shift the way you look at things. Okay? Are we together so far? Are you here? Are you with me? I don't want you to just get hypnotized or get spaced out. If you have a question, you can raise your hand and we talk about it. I will, I will get more in details. So you shift your, the way you look and then you start seeing, okay, I'm seeing this evil person. I'm looking at whomever you find evil whatever, evil corporations, evil, um, the oil cartels, the um, Anunnaki, the, the Illuminati, the deep state, the bad guys, the good guys. You pull their mask away and you look that, oh my God, behind everyone's mask is the same God hiding behind them. It's the same God hiding because God is a trickster. God is a trickster. He's a shaman. It creates the illusion to put you to sleep. So now you're thinking that there is different people there, but there is no one else. It's only one. You are that. There's only one of us right now here communicating to itself. There's nobody outside of myself. There's 7 billion people on this planet, but not even one of these 7 billion people has its own free will or its own independence. All 7 billion people are being run by one spirit. One electricity is running all the appliances. One electricity is running all appliances. One living spirit is running all the units. These are units. Body, mind. It's got a mind and it's got a body. It's a unit. It's like a robot. And that spirit runs it, runs through it. So this dude doesn't have any kind of independence of itself to do anything, to do anything good or to do anything bad. It's a unit being powered by the source by the oneness. So you start a practice of looking at everything as God, looking at everything as an extension of yourself. You have to make that practice and you have to do it every day. So it sets inside you. It sits, sits, you know, it settles in you. Not just for five minutes or 10 minutes, not just for today, I'm telling you these things and you say, okay, blah, 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 blah. And then you don't do it. And then you come back to me and tell me, I really want to reach the higher, higher dimension. Well, you have to also do the work. If you really want to get to it and shift your consciousness, because it's an inside job. You have to change something inside yourself, not outside of you. You have to change your perception. That's how it works. So A, you begin to look at everything and everyone as God as that. Now, to clear this, 
does this mean that on a physical human level you have to go and agree with everyone and everything they do because they're all God? No, you don't have to. Do you need to like everybody that you meet? No, you don't have to like everybody you meet. Do I like everyone I meet? No, I don't. Some people I like, some people I don't. Some people ign bug the shit out of me. They bug me. I don't want to be around them. But do I love them? I do love their essence. I don't love their personality. I may not like the way they look. I may not like the way they behave. But I love their essence. Because their essence is my own self. It's God. So, the way I see that there is nobody separated from me, nobody outside of myself ever existed or ever will exist because it's all the one. That's one thing you can do on your human psyche level, okay? So, that's something you can work on with yourself to shift your perception, how you look at that, that you work on yourself. That's in the mental area, that's in the psyche area that you do, okay? So now, while you're doing this, okay, you're shifting your perception, you're opening your perception, you're looking at the bigger picture, wider picture. And now you're not questioning things that why the world is like this, why God created it, da, 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 why, what a mean guy, God it is that it's done this and that and is killing kids in Africa and has created all these evil pharmaceutical company to drug people and Blah, 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 all these screwed up things. Now you're going beyond that because you're looking at these evil corporations that are being run by God. They are a part of yourself. They are an aspect of yourself. They're the evil and dark side of your own self. So now you're starting to look at things that there is no other there's no one else. It's only you. You're the only one. It's all one. So then your fear starts to disappear. You're not afraid of what they're going to do to you because you and them are one. You're not separated from them. They're aspects of yourself. So they can't harm it's like I say, my right hand is going to destroy my left hand. Have you ever had your right hand attacking your left hand? You pick up a knife and you want to cut this hand and this hand is fighting with this hand. So they're in a battle with each other. Has it ever happened to you? Have you ever seen that? Does ever your right hand attack your left hand? I mean, if I say this to you, you tell me what kind of stupid thing is this, Zarathustra? What did you smoke last night? What was in that bottle of Akavit or tequila that you drank last night? So your right hand is not going to attack your left hand. They're all one. Your right eye is not going to have a conflict with your left eye. It's all yourself. Same thing. You have to grow out of this duality world of others to recognize and to look at it as yourself. This is yourself. You're always looking at yourself. 
Now, on a human level, let's say it's it's 11 o'clock at night, you park your car in on the street and it's a little bit dark and there is some weird guy walking down the street and he's kind of sh shabby, shady. Naturally, your nervous system is going to be a little bit frozen. You're going to be a little bit scared. You're going to be a little worried. At that moment, you're not going to tell your, you're not going to, walk to this guy and say, oh, Lord, you are myself and come and rape me or do whatever you want. No, on a human level, while you have the awareness that that's an aspect of yourself, but in the meantime, you are careful. That's on a human level. That's practical every day. But in a deeper level, you never lose perspective that that person is an aspect of yourself. You know that. Do you understand the difference? It's very important. So you're not in this illusion. Because a lot of people struggle with that. So that's one thing. Another thing is that if you want to come to this higher level of consciousness, and again, in the workshop, we're going to get into these things. I'm going to help you with it, with certain meditation, certain activation, because we're going to be working on, because these are in the mental level. This is why I'm speaking to you, right? I'm telling you this. I'm telling you that. I'm sharing with you. What is it you need to do to get free? Get free from your crazy mind that takes you in all these places and drives you nuts. How do you free yourself from this? How do you free yourself from lack of self-love? That you don't love yourself. How do you free yourself from this place that you don't accept yourself? You don't see yourself as who you really are. You don't see your own beauty. You think you're going to drop and die because of Corona. You think you're going to end. You think that the evil forces are going to tear you apart. How do you free yourself from all these things? How do you turn everything around and move into this harmony within yourself? Not changing the world, moving into the inner harmony and, and finding the inner stillness. So no matter what happens in the pendulum of the world, you are not affected. The world goes up and down as it's happening right now. We can see it right now. This is the best example it could have ever been. It turned upside down. What was down is up. What was up is down. It didn't think it's going to happen in this lifetime. You read it in these different books, but you didn't think it's going to happen. happen to you, but it happened. It's happening right now can't be any more clear than that. This is perfect opportunity. This is divine setup, completely set up for us. So what do we do? What am I going to do with this? How do I, how do I go beyond? Cool. Good. I got your attention. Number one is that since mentally you cannot arrive into the fifth dimensional consciousness by only simply thinking or talking yourself into it, the way you reach the higher consciousness is you have to learn a system, a teaching, 
a method of raising your vibrations to a higher frequency because the fifth dimension is a different frequency. It's a different reality. And you cannot go to fifth dimension with this kind of mentality that you have. You can enter into fifth dimension because your mentality is duality. Fifth dimension is one. It's oneness. It's one only. There is no two in it. It's a dimension of oneness. So to enter into the dimension of oneness, you have to rise above who you are, what you think you are, to the truth of who you are. The truth of who you are is different than who you think you are. Who you think you are is a human being separated with a sense of separation and needy. That's who you are. Who you think you are. I'm sorry. This is who you think you are. You're separated. Your experience of life is separation. You're always in fear and anxiety. Your feelings always get hurt. You're always up and down in this emotional yo-yo. When somebody tells you something that insults you, or you don't like it, or things don't go your way, or you don't get what you want, and your body is always reacting because of the hormonal changes and chemical changes in the body. So that's, but that's not who you are. That's your perception of who you think you are because nobody ever gave you a better model. Nobody showed you a better model of who you really are. So you don't know what to compare yourself to then you get trapped into this pseudo spirituality work that you going to all these different courses and seminars which are good in that moment because it's a step to get to where you're at here that they're all emphasizing that you have your own free will you can create anything you want you can get wherever you want so what they do is they're fortifying your sense of individuality, your sense of separation is getting fortified, it's getting stronger. The I thought that I am powerful, I am mighty, I am the creator of my own life, which is bullshit, gets fortified, gets stronger. So of course you're never going to come to the fifth dimension because you're going to remain in this duality place. You can come to fifth dimension. Just one moment. I'm sorry. My... Okay. Next. Sorry, my... Um, just be patient with me for a moment. I'm trying to deal with my, what happened to this thing? Okay, never mind, forget it. I can deal with it, Instagram. So, in the past 50 years, I want to ask you this. I want you to do some research, please, and tell me if I'm wrong. Bring your research back to me. Educate me if I'm wrong. Okay, I'm asking you a question. This is a challenge. Do some homework and come back to me next week or in two weeks and tell me, Zarathustra, you're wrong. Okay, tell me if one person, one person, I'm not asking for much. If one person got enlightened from pseudo spirituality, Bring me one person who got that you know they got enlightened from pseudo spirituality, from any of the training programs, courses, teachers that they are teaching you self empowerment type of courses. 
come back to me and give me one person that in past 50 years got enlightened from that kind of practice. Because I don't know of one person. And I've been in this realm, this industry, in this thing for 30 something years as a spiritual seeker. And I don't know of a single person who got enlightened. And I'm, now this is different if you were with Muktananda, if you were with J. Krishnamurti, if you were with Osha, if you were with Neem Karoli Baba, if you were with Nisargadatta, you were with Papaji, you were with Ramana Maharshi. Those are not pseudo spiritual teachers. None of those gurus you go to are going to tell you the rap you're hearing today that you create your own reality. Oh, I'm coming down with a cold. This is the thing that bugs the shit out of me. I have to tell you what really bugs me. I have some friends that their lives are miserable. They're broke. They don't get what they want. They don't get the man they want. And when I'm talking to them, you know what? I feel like I'm coming with a cold. No, no, no. Don't say this word. Don't say this word. Don't say anything negative. You're going to create it. Don't say you're coming with a cold. Dude, I feel like I'm coming with a cold. And I'm, you're my friend. I'm talking to you. I can't even tell you something like this because it's going to manifest. It will happen. You have any friends? Are you one of these people or you've gone to that period of time that everything you say has to be a positive thing to say? You should not say anything negative because it's going to happen because you're creating your own reality through your thoughts and your speeches. Now, all day long, you have to be spending time not thinking negative and not saying anything negative. And you know how exhausting that is that you keep doing this all day long and not all day you're thinking, you're thinking not to say something negative or not to do to project anything negative. So that keeps you into thinking means you are a person capable of doing something so that keeps you into the trap because you become an individual who's capable of doing something and it sounds attractive but you can't because you're not an individual separated from god god is the only thing there is and god is the only one who's operating through you so there is no you You, as a separate entity, does not exist. You don't exist in separation. You've always been one. Okay. You've always been one. You will always be one. And it doesn't matter what you do. You're always one. You're always God. Now... So then you may come and say, well, why are you talking about these things? And why are you giving me this exercise? I'm giving you this exercise for you to realize that you are one. It's not for me. I'm giving you that exercise because I already know you're one. I know you're one with God, but I see you suffering. So I want to help you not suffer. So this ascension to fifth dimension is you're already there. It's not like you're going anywhere. Your higher self, your wisdom, your inner being, the observer within yourself is already enlightened. You are already enlightened. You just don't know it because you have a false belief system. You think you're a beggar. So what do you do? You're begging. You're running around to different teachers, different gurus, different famous people, begging them to give you some love, to give you some confirmation, to tell you that you're good, 
but you don't know that you are the source. You're already the king. Why? Because you think you're somebody. You think you have, you got identified with an individual. So now you're this individual. This individual is very small. It's a little tiny thing. It's scared of everything. It's very vulnerable. So now you're needy. You're running around trying to beg somebody to give you something because you became an individual. You're needy. You don't know you're the whole thing. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to wake you up to who you are, to the truth of who you are, because you are the whole thing. You, and everything you need is already within yourself. Nobody in the world can give you what you already have inside yourself. You already have all the answers. You already have all the powers. You were never born to this world and you're never going to die out of it. You're beyond this world. Who you are is beyond. Who you are is complete. Who you are is the source of love and it's beautiful. I wish you could see yourself because when I see you, I see your power i see your love i see your heart pulse i see the light inside you i see it with my eyes but you don't see it so what how what can i do for you to also see yourself so these courses these practices are to, for you to change your perception, to recognize who you are. But not, when I say to recognize who you are, I'm not talking about pseudo-spirituality because pseudo-spirituality is all about boosting up your ego. It's all about fortifying the I thought that I am someone Blah, blah, blah. I, my past life, you know, I was Nefertiti. Past life, you know, I come from this lineage of blah, blah, blah. These are all bullshit. These are all to fortify your sense of separation that I am something very special. But now you're talking about the ego. Of course you're special because you're God. But I'm not talking about your individual sense of separation. That one is ugly. That's limited. I'm talking about the truth of who you are. That's what I'm pointing out to. Of course you're special because you're God. What else do you think you are? You are complete, complete. Right now in this moment, you're 100% complete. You don't believe me. You tell yourself, how can I be complete? Because I got all these blah, blah, blah. And then their story comes. Your mind comes with your story and you say it to yourself. So I'm not here to pump you up. You're not at the meeting with the destiny. You're not in a self-empowerment course with me to pump you up. That's not what I'm trying to do. To make you feel good for two days or an hour or two hours. That's not my intention. I want you to realize yourself. And to realize yourself, you have to go beyond the mind. You got to go beyond this mind. This mind is telling you, you are a person with all these needs. You need to go beyond the mind to see yourself, the Atma, the observer, the one who's observing everything. The one who knows everything. 
the sen the the pre the state of I am. When we do the meditation, you're quiet, you're silent, you dive within yourself. There is no thoughts. And then you are complete alignment with the oneness because there is no person there. You become one. Becoming one means that there you, the person you think you are, is not going to be there anymore. It's like I pick up a glass of water. This is a glass of water, right? And I, okay, so this is, this is a person, okay? This is me, Zarathustra. Am I the glass or am I the water? What am I? This is just a container. The glass is a container. The essence is what's in it. So now let me pour this into the ocean. I'm going to pour this to the ocean. So I'm going to pour this water into the ocean. So when I do that, where is Zarathustra? Zarathustra goes back to where he came from. So now he's back into the ocean. Where is the individual now? What happens to the individual? When you die, where do you go? When you sleep and you don't dream, you're not dreaming. There's no mental activity. Activity. So the I thought is not there. Where do you go? When you sleep and you don't dream, where do you go? What happens to you? You go back to your original state. So you're not separated from the oneness because every night you sleep, you go back to it. And when you wake up, the first thought that comes to your mind is, I am, I am John, I am Keith, I am Mary, I am Marit. And then a person comes back. And when the person comes back, the world comes back. And when the world comes back, the problems come back. Do you grog? Does this make any sense? Yeah. So you got to go beyond. You have to go beyond. Into no thoughts. Now, and a part of that is also to disconnect one of the practices I, I, we're going to be doing, which I have to give you these tools, which we're going to be doing in the workshop, is learning to disassociate yourself and disconnect yourself from the world. I know. <laughs> This is very opposite from maybe anyone else tells you. I get it. Can you become disconnected from the world? Disassociating with the world. Not physically. Mentally. Not paying attention to the news. Not paying attention to what's happening. Just not giving a shit about the world. Because that's also an illusion. It's not even real. So your business, you have to be very selfish in this thing. This is where selfishness is a good thing and is going to help you. What kind of spiritual teacher are you, Zarathustra, that teaches selfishness? Well, you have to be selfish. Means what? 
you disconnect from the world and you bring your attention 100% to the self, to the I am. And that's where you keep your focus on. Oh, this is happening. These are the demonstrations. You need to come and support it or they're destroying the forests. They're killing all the animals. They're killing all the whales and all the dolphins. You're not interested. They're destroying the atmosphere. You're not interested. They're destroying all the farms. You're not passionate. You don't care about any of these things. You don't give a shit about what is happening in the world. You're only interested in one thing. You don't care about anything else. And that one thing is to keep your attention on the stillness. You keep your attention inwards and you're still. So the world is a pendulum, it's up and down and up and down, and you don't pay any attention to what is going on in it because you have zero interest in the world. Zero, not even a little bit. Zero interest in the world. Can you do that? Do you think you can bring yourself to do that? Ask yourself that question. Are you up for this task? You want to get to the oneness. You want to get to fifth dimension, to this higher level of consciousness. Then you got to let go of this one because this one that you're so passionate about is that the very thing that is holding you down. You got to let it go because one day you're going to have to let go of this one too. You're going to have to let go well, you don't let go of this. This one is going to give you the finger. Your best friend that you were living with for 50 years, 60 years, 80 years, 90 years, one day your body is going to give you the finger. It's going to say, fuck you. It gets cancer. It gets tumor. The eyes don't work. The brain doesn't work. Hands are start shaking, everything starts to malfunction, and you've been together all of your life. And it's going to tell you, hasta la vista, baby, I am tired, I'm, I'm going. So you have to let go of this one too. So why don't you let go of the world? Don't be involved in it. And just bring your attention in inner silence. Be still, stay still. Stillness means you don't react. Your partner comes into the room and tells you, you're messy, you don't clean house, you're an asshole, you don't take care of our dogs and cats and throws up on you and throws a lot of stuff at you. You don't respond. You look at it, you don't answer or you say, Okay, thank you. You go to work, your boss comes and tells you, you're late, you don't take care of your work, you're always like this, you're always like that. You don't defend yourself. You don't say anything. You say, you stay still. You do not respond to anything. You don't react to anything. To your friends, family, kids, cats, dogs, life situation, and to the world, you become like a statue inside. You want to get free? You have to do this. Because you have to connect to what is still, what is not conditional. The world is conditional. When things go your way, you're happy. And when things don't go your way, you're miserable. So you're a yo-yo. Yo-yo is not going to awaken. Yo-yo is not going to go to the next level. 
the next level, you have to go beyond these things. So we're going to get into all these things in details. And I give you, I help you with it, with the tools and what is it you need to do? What is the way to do it? I'll share it with you. So you don't have to go through 30 years of suffering like I did to get to this. You don't have to do that because the help is here. And if you like to do it, go ahead and do it. No one's going to hold you back. Believe me. Nobody on this planet cares if you're going to suffer or not. It's up to you. What is it you want to do? When you're ready to stop playing games and wasting your time with all these elementary spiritual teachings, crystals and tarot cards and beads and other planets and other lives and blah, 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 and manifesting this and clearing your past lives. When you're done with A, B, C, D and you're ready to go, come on over and I'm happy to show you the way. But you got to be done with all those A, B, C, D. Finish the elementary, high, the kid stuff and come for the advanced teachings. And I'm happy to show you the way. Because I want to see you become free. But you got to finish up those things. If you're still caught into those stuff, human design and what is my astrology and what does this mean and what does that mean? If you're whenever you're ready and done with those things, then we're ready to do the work. And if you're super, super serious and you can afford it and you really want to do it, then we do the life training program together. And that's four months of working one-on-one -on -one together and come to me and, and I, I will work with you because I have time to do it right now. But in the meantime, whether you can afford it, whether you can't afford it, it doesn't matter. All information that you need, I'm providing to you and I'm sharing it with you. They're all in my videos. They're all in the teachings. And the teachings is here. The only way to go beyond suffering is to go beyond the thinking mind that you are a person capable of creating your own life. That is the cause of your misery. You have to go beyond that. Where there is no thoughts and there is no person. And that's where the heart opens up and you begin to feel the love every day. The juice that comes up. The love. The presence. God begins to reveal itself to you when you're not thinking, when you're in the silence. And then you feel the force field. Then you see the mystery. You see how magical things work with each other. You see how things flowing in your life. That does not mean you're going to get the technique to manipulate things to get what you want. I know what you're thinking. No, 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 no. I'm not going to give you and teach you techniques so you can manipulate things to get what you want because that's not what it's about. This is to go beyond wanting, to come to this place that you don't want anything. Then life pours it to you, gives you everything you need. Because you're not a person who's needy. You are needless. You are free.
We're extremely taken care of. We're extremely loved. We're extremely protected right now in this very moment. We do not need to worry about anything because when you feel the presence of God, love, spirit, whatever word you like, I know some of you react to God, the presence, the spirit. Do you feel the presence of life in you? Are you alive? Do you love God? Do you love the spirit? Do you feel that? And if you do, then know that this life, this God, this spirit takes care of every moment of your life, takes care of all of your needs. You don't need to worry about how to make a living or how to put things together. God takes care of that for you. You can relax into that. You can step back into that and just kind of let go of this madness that you are in control. You're driving this vehicle and you're really in control of this world and you have to constantly be in control of everything. Kind of relax into letting it go. Maybe you should get out of the car and go and look underneath the car. And you will discover that this car you're driving, actually it's on a rail, like a train. It's on a predetermined path. So this wheel that you're turning is only imaginary. You're imagining you're directing it because a lot of times you turn it to go left and it goes right. And a lot of times you try to go right and it goes left. Look at your life. How many times you wanted to go here and you ended up here? How many times in your life you thought, this is what I want, this is what I'm going to do, blah, 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 and you ended up not doing any of it, despite of how much time and energy you put into it, something else happened. How is life supposed to show you that you are not in control at all? God is in control. So that's good news. Thank God God is in control. Because if I was in control, it would have been a mess. This way, I can just relax and let go. And let the presence provide everything. It will give you everything you need. And it has done that. Maybe you've gone through a lot of hard times. But... So far, so good, and you're here. Stay in that place. Stay in your faith. Stay in that sense of being, of the presence and the love. And let God show the love to you. Dive into the love. Dive into the presence. I'm not talking about superficial love. I'm not talking about psyching yourself up to say, oh, it's all love and everyone is love. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about discover the presence of love of God here in yourself. And that you can do when you're quiet, when you're still, when you're meditative, then you're in complete union with God and everything else. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't have time for answering questions today. I apologize. It's a busy day. I have things to do and I got to go. I look forward to meeting you next Wednesday. The Academy is going to go on.
And again, in two weeks, we're going to have our shamanic healing circle on the 23rd. And then the Ascension to Fifth Dimensional Consciousness workshop is going to be on 25th and 26th of July. So if you're interested, you're welcome to sign up uh, through our website. The website is zaratustra.tv. And if you want to communicate with me, you can write to me at info at zaratustra.tv. That's our email, info at zaratustra.tv. That's my email and my website is zaratustra.tv. Remember, you are in very good hands, okay? Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, Lord God, loving you extremely. There's so much love here for you. God loves you extremely. And God takes care of all of us. All of us. We're all children of God. Mama. Mama takes care of all of us. Feeds all of us. Every time money comes, food comes, anything you need, it just comes to you somehow. Know that it's God is taking care of you because we're children of God. So you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to worry. Don't go there. Just stay in this place. Stay home in the heart. In this place, knowing, practice this every day. Tell yourself, I know God will take care of me. I trust in God. Get into the habit of it. I'm not talking about religious belief. I'm talking about shift your perception. Hang out with Her Majesty. Ask Her Majesty for everything you want. Forget about the world. Forget about other people. Be in communication with the being here. And the being here will reveal itself. You want awakening? Ask the being within yourself to reveal itself to you because you're already awakened. You just don't know it. You've forgotten. So just ask her, show yourself to me. Reveal your presence in my life. I want to drink you. I want to eat you. I want to be, I want to just constantly be in this communion with you. Ask that. The presence will show itself to you. It will show you miracles every day. It will show you magic every day. Because every moment of this life that we're alive, it is a miracle. It's a miracle we're here. It's a miracle we're alive. It's a miracle we can talk to each other. It's a miracle to... Be able to see a friend and just touch their face or kiss your friend on the cheek or your mother or someone you love and give love and receive love. These are miracles. Look back. Six months ago, it was a miracle to go sit outside, sit in a coffee shop, sit in any restaurants you wanted with your friends. Get in a plane, travel anywhere you wanted to go. You remember that? And now we don't have it. You can't go to restaurants. You can't 
sit next to people, you can jump in a plane and travel, all of those are gone. Were you appreciating those simple things six, seven months ago? And it's taken away from you. Appreciate simple things that gifts that we have. Everything you have right now, appreciate it as a gift of God. Be grateful for it. Simple things, very simple. And in that appreciation, God will give you more. It will show you more. She will pull the veil of illusion and she will show you her face to you. And she will pour so much love in your heart that some days you're just in complete ecstasy. Cry, you're crying, you're just in ecstasy. And that all comes from yourself. Believe me, it won't be me. It won't be another guru or teacher or a shaman. You, you will be that person. Because it's inside yourself. Turn your attention inwards. See your heart. See how beautiful you are. See your power here. Don't look at other people outside. Bring your attention inwards. And find it inside yourself. That's where it is. Because you are who you're looking for. Love you. Namaste. And I'll see you next week. God bless.